We're continuing in the best of series. These are the areas of the, each Bible book that I like the best, and we may not get through all of them before I die, but uh, we're certainly going to start in the book of Revelation and work backward to Genesis, and uh, we've been looking at the churches because it's one of my favorite areas, because these churches could be all practical churches, that is, lessons that we need to learn today about the church. They could be perennial churches, that could be the churches of the various ages, or they could be the prophetical uh, churches, that is, the churches of the future. Uh, I tend to think that they're all three, tell you the truth, and I think that in every age all of these churches have existed and do exist and probably will exist. However, there may be a, a closing of the gap of more of one type than another as we approach these end days. Nevertheless, we've been looking at the church at Ephesus, which was the fallen church. They left their first love. We looked at the Smyrna church, which was a fearful church going through trials and poverty. We looked at the church at Pergamum, the, the faltering and their doctrinal issues. Uh, and uh, Thyatira, which was the false church that was uh, having uh, problems in leadership with Jezebel. Church of Thyatira, this is the false church uh, with Jezebel. Sardis, the fruitless church, which was uh, being blessed in a lot of ways, but they still weren't bearing fruit. And uh, Sardis, the fruitless church. And Philadelphia, the feeble church. Uh, and that's what we're looking at today. Why was it feeble? Well, because God had opened doors for the church at Philadelphia uh, and said nobody could shut those doors. They had opportunities, but they were weak. They weren't able to captivate and uh, capitalize on the opportunities. You know, in a lot of ways, I think today's church is just like that. We have electronic media uh, like never before, advertising capabilities like never before. Uh, we have all kinds of ways of reaching people like never before because of social media and because of electronics and capabilities. We have buildings like never before. We have buses and transportation like never before. Uh, we have so many opportunities. God has placed an open door before all of our churches, an opportunity to witness uh, here in the Tryon area we have a projected large quantity of 30 to 50,000 people coming for what are known as the World Equestrian Games. It's amazing, small little community like this area that would have that many people coming. Uh, people from all different countries, all different religious backgrounds. And here we are as Baptists and we have this door open to us. God is bringing to us 30 to 50,000 people. And uh, we're still struggling trying to figure out how we're going to try to reach them. Uh, we wanted to try to buy a storefront within the grounds of the Equestrian Center. And we're on a waiting list. And we're 25th on that waiting list. Uh, we've tried to contact small churches in the area to see if we could use their land or facilities to try to reach some of these 30 to 50,000 people. And now today I suggested to the Polk Association that we might try to find a landowner uh, who is Baptist by nature and evangelical by wish, uh, who would lend us land adjoining the equestrian center that we could erect a large tent and open it up to all of these visitors as a place where they could find information about how they can know that they have eternal life. An open door, but we're feeble. With all of the ways that we have of reaching people, all of the tremendous tools that we have at our fingertips, and we're still feeble. <laughs> we're still scratching our head deciding how we're going to reach these thirty to 50,000 people who are coming into our community. Where is the Southern Baptist Convention in this? Uh, where, where is the state convention? of both North and South Carolina in this. With all of the thousands of workers that we have in our conventions and our denomination, 
where, where is the leadership in taking advantage of this opportunity to reach people from so many different walks of life, so many different uh, religious backgrounds? We're a feeble church. God's opened a door for us and nobody can shut it. But do we have the wherewithal to go through it and to reach these people? There'll be all of the stable hands. Uh, there'll be all of the trainers. There'll be all of the owners. And uh, they'll come from all different religions and no religion at all. Thirty to 50,000 people God's bringing to us. And yet somehow we've dropped the ball. They'll be coming in September. There's not much time left for planning. Not much time left for organization. And yet I don't see anything in a significant way being done. Feeble church. Maybe that's the church that we are today. Maybe this is the church age of Philadelphia churches. All kinds of capabilities and nobody taking advantage of them. That's my thought for the day. I hope maybe it's your thought of the day. Maybe you'll talk to your pastor. Maybe you'll write a letter or call one of the associations or the state convention or even better yet, the Southern Baptist Convention and say, hey, we don't have much time, but let's not be feeble. Let's mobilize ourselves and let's reach these people that God's bringing to us from all over the country, all over the world uh, to these world equestrian games. And let's try to make an impact for Christ with this open door that we have before us. God bless you and have a great day.